Compositing transparent elements is even more complicated than compositing reflections. We have the pass called refraction and this one is responsible for transparency. When we have it activated and set the material of some transparent objects to have ray trace transparency, we can take this refraction pass and add it to our composite. If we mix properly all of the other passes, adding refraction pass will recreate our combined pass. This object has the transparency turned on, that's the shape of it. I have set its alpha to zero, set some index of refraction, and if I render this setup, that's the result I get. Let's be honest, transparency is not very good handled by Blender's internal render engine. If we really wanted to achieve some believable result, we should definitely go for other render engine. But let's for the moment say that we are happy with this one. We can composite all of the passes together, and if we don't add the refraction pass, we would get something like this. So this result is as if this object is not transparent at all. Then we have the refraction pass that looks like this, and we see almost nothing here. But we have some negative values of the colors. It in fact represents nothing. The situation here is similar to reflection pass. This refraction pass is created such that when we add it to the composite without it, we get the final image. So that's how our final composite looks like. It's the same as the combined pass with some slight differences at the edges and it's caused by anti-aliasing and the stuff that I talked about earlier. So theoretically there is a way of combining the refraction pass with our composite. The level of control that we have here is very limited. We can set the factor to something else than 1, let's set it to 0.6, maybe 0.8. And this mimics the behavior of this material as if it was semi-transparent. But that's all we can do with it. This is definitely not the level of control we are looking for. So if we want to have some transparent or semi-transparent objects in our scene, and we really want to use the Blender's internal render engine and play a little bit with compositing, I would recommend faking everything. So instead of trying to use the refractions that are available here, I'd rather go for creating separate render layers, separate layers, use the normal pass and few other tricks that I am about to show you in this episode. I used those techniques when creating this image. Here we have the windows, the cover of the lamps. They are transparent, but I didn't use any standard tools to control the transparency of them. So let me create the setup basing on this simple scene. This object is supposed to be transparent. I want it to look as if it's made of glass. Glass is transparent, but I don't set any transparency. And the other feature of glass is its reflectivity. So I have enabled the mirror and as always I set reflectivity to 1. The color of the material doesn't matter at all, but just to keep things organized let me set the intensity to 1. All of the material's intensities should be set to 1. For the specular, let's use the standard shader, leave the intensity to 0.5, and even though I would like to have the hardness a little bit higher, I will leave it at this low value. It's easier to make it more contrasty in compositing than soften it afterwards. That's in fact all we need. But the transparency, the reflectivity will be controlled basing on the angle that we are looking at this object. So we will have to enable the normal pass. I have placed this object in separate layer, so first layer contains everything except this object and the second layer contains only this object. Both of those layers are active and I create two render layers, one renders only those objects and the second one only this one. For those objects I have activated every pass that I need to be able to easily control them in compositing. But in this example I will only focus on transparency so probably I will use only the combined pass of this render layer. For the layer responsible for transparent object, I need the combined pass. This will serve me as the reflections pass. Just for safety, I have activated the diffuse pass, specular pass and included it into the combined pass as well as the reflections pass. I probably won't use it, but anyway, I have activated this. So that's the result of our render. Here we are looking at the combined pass of the render layer without transparent objects. That's the combined pass of this transparent object. And we also have all of the other passes for this render layer. 
This one, the normal pass, will be one of the most important ones for this render layer. Let's first take care about the transparency of this object. I want to base it on the normals. If I use the input render layer node, I have the direct access to the alpha channel of the render layer. But I have pre-rendered this and saved the multi-layer OpenEXR. So that's how this node looks like when we use the input render layer and that's the image input type. As you see here, we don't have the direct access to the alpha channel. But that's not the problem because we can extract the alpha channel from this image. Let's delete this input render layer and separate the combined pass into the RGBA channels and we will use the alpha channel of it. And here's the normal pass. Let me pass it through the vector normal node and use the dot of it. But I would like to invert this so that it's more transparent at the areas where the surface is facing the camera and less transparent at the areas where it's away from the camera. I will use the color ramp for this because this way I will be able to control more things using just one node. We can easily invert those colors by flipping the colors here. But then those areas would become opaque. But that's not a big deal because we can multiply this image by the alpha channel. So let me add the mix node, change the blending modes to multiply, plug it here and multiply the alpha channel by the result of this color ramp. That's the image that we get and by adjusting the color ramp we can easily control the transparency. Let's for example move this point a little bit and we can as well change this point not to be pure white but a little bit darker and let's say that this will be the initial opacity of this object. So let's now take the image without this object I will use the combined pass of this render layer, but I could as well combine it using the passes that I have available here. And let's take this and mix some color into it using this one as the factor. So I will add the color mix node, leave the blending mode to mix, take the combined pass of this one, let's take a look at it and mix it with the color that we want our transparent object to be. Let's set this color to maybe something like that. Now this color covers all of the image, but when we use this one as the factor, we get something like this. Let's make it more visible by adjusting the color ramp. I will make this color a little bit brighter. Now let's add the reflections to it. I will use the combined pass of this render layer. Let's duplicate this mix node, plug the result of this one to the upper socket of it, take the combined pass of this render layer and plug it to the lower socket. Let's take a look at it. I want to mix it using the alpha channel of this one. So let's simply turn this checkbox on. But I don't want to mix it in, but I want to add it. It would as well be good to control the basing on the normals, but I would like to have the different normals than those ones. So let's duplicate this color ramp, but I will use shift control D. So the copy is connected the same way as the original. Let's take a look at it. It looks exactly the same as this one, but I will alter it. Let's maybe move this point a little bit here and make this one a little bit darker. Then I can use this one as the factor for adding the reflections. And I don't care about those areas because the alpha is taken care of by turning on this option. Let's take a look at the result. Let's adjust this color ramp a little bit more. And let's for the moment leave it this way. I have just few notes here, but the setup begins to be a little bit messy. So let's make some order here.
I am adding those reroute points by shift, left click and drag. And I can move this point wherever I want. If I want to delete it, I can simply hit Ctrl X. This feature is available since Blender 2.64. Okay, so this is how our image looks like at the moment, but we don't have any refraction. The image behind this glass should be distorted. And we can fake it by adding the distort displace node. Let's plug it here. But I would like to distort only the areas covered by this transparent object, so let me maybe detach it, Alt D, move it here. Let's add the reroute point here. Shift select this node and hit F to connect it. And I will mix the result of it into the original image using a certain factor. So let's duplicate maybe this mix node, plug it here, connect this one to the lower socket. And just to be safe, let's use the alpha channel of this render layer as the factor. Now we can displace the image that we are mixing into the original by setting those X scale and Y scale values. Let's set this one to minus 20 maybe. As you see, the image moved to the right. For the Y scale, let's also use minus 20. And that's definitely not the result that we are looking for. But when as the vector, we used the normal pass of this render layer. Let me add the reroute point here and plug it here. It begins to look much better. I forgot to add the specular pass of the glass, so let me do it right now. And that's my result. And I can play with the distortion a little bit more. Let's maybe, before we add the displaced image, use another distortion tool. That is distort lens distortion. Let's take a look at it. And let's use some distort value like, I don't know, 0.2. But I would rather use some negative value. And I would like this kind of distortion that is happening here in the middle of the image to happen somewhere here. So let's use the trick like this. Before I distort this image, I will move it to the right. Then this area will be moved to the middle of the image. Let's add distort translate node, plug it here, move the image to the right, let's say 100 pixels, maybe a little bit more. And then let's move the distorted version of it to the opposite direction. So I will duplicate this node, plug it here, and instead of moving it to the right, I will move it to the left. So let's change 110 to minus 110. It seems that I should rather use 100. So let's change this one to 100 and this one to minus 100. So I end up with a setup like this. I take the original image without this object that looks like this, move it a little bit to the right and down, then pass it through the lens distortion node. I move this distorted image back to the left and up. Then I pass it through the displace node where I use some values for X scale and Y scale. And as the vector, I use the normal pass of this object. Then I mix this image with the original image using this mix node where as the factor I use the alpha channel of this object. Then down here I mix the color like this into the image, where as the factor I use the alpha channel of this object multiplied by the normals passed through the normal node that is modified by the color ramp, so the factor looks like this, and that's the result of mixing this color into the image using this factor. Then I add the reflections, I use the combined pass of this object as the reflections and as the factor I also use the modified normals. Then at the end I add specular which gives me the image like this. So as you can see there are many things that we can fake here in compositing using just the reflections, alpha and normals and if the transparent objects are not very much complicated we can achieve pretty decent results. I wouldn't call this one decent. But I wanted to show you the setup basing on 
such objects because this pretty clearly shows the techniques.